ready? Are we ready? Sure. Okay. So I guess they're all ready for Christmas. Good show. So tomorrow, I'm in good shape today. Our minister of the day is Reverend Anka, and then our assistant, of course, is Reverend Nancy Aldhouse, and then we have our, yeah, there he is, our music man, McMahon, and our one, two songs and leaders, and uh, I guess that's about it, and we got our, our man that makes everything seen on the, on the screen. <laughs> well, you know what screen it is. <laughs> Whatever the screen he puts up. <laughs> Just enjoy. Thank you. We will thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I assist Reverend Nancy today, and I'm very pleased with that because it's a very unusual service today, very good service, we will receive communion today. So for me, this is a very good learning experience, like my teacher, she always wants to teach me, she's great. Well, welcome actually to the first Sunday after the Mayan time. We survived, yay! <laughs> so we welcome this first Sunday in the newborn time. How exciting. Yes. Let's keep our ears and eyes open for the divine guidance of God. Yes. We will sing the song. Songbook number 89, Sweet, Sweet Spirit. Songbook 89. We say now, our Father, the Lord's Prayer. The other times of the year. So actually, we should celebrate every day Christmas. What do you think? Yeah. That is one of the reasons why we love Christmas, so it feels so good from the inside. Yes. Christ Jesus will be born and remind us about this beautiful light and love. Christmas is the celebrating of this light in the name of the God and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And you may be seated. Amen. Amen. We will read the church, the sh uh, church creed on the inside of your church bulletin on the left. So we have our uh, inside in the bulletin about the fourth aspect of what is about love. The first Sunday in Advent, we lit the candle of hope. Our hope is in God and in the Son Jesus the Christ. As we light the candle of hope, we thank God for the hope he has brought to the world. The second Sunday of Advent, we lit the candle of peace. As we light the candle of peace, we are reminded that Jesus the Christ is the Prince of Peace. And we thank God for the inner peace he gives us when we have faith in him. This third Sunday of Advent, we lit the candle of joy. As we relight the candle of joy, let's remember that when God is born in our hearts, we receive the gift joy. Today is the fourth Sunday in Advent, the Sunday of love. 
God's law is a perfect law. He holds nothing back. God's law gives us everything we need, both negative and positive. <clears throat> to live a life of hope, peace, joy, and love. And we say all together, the Bible says, Remember that God's love never ends. That Jesus the Christ, with God's love, shows us how to love others. <coughs> All together, love. and join our voices and hearts in prayer. God of hope, peace, joy, and perfect love, we thank you for these precious gifts. Our time of worship is a time we celebrate the gifts you give to each of us. Your gift of perfect love is present in our hearts every moment. Help us to always keep our hearts Now we have the hymn, number 179 in the handbook. And 22 in the songbook. <coughs> Beautiful. Yes. The spiritual reading today is from the Aquarium Gospel of Jesus Christ, chapter 3, 1 to 19. Birth of Jesus. The time was nearly due for Jesus to be born, and Mary longed to see Elizabeth. And she and Joseph turned their faces toward the Ju Judean hills. And when, upon the way, they came to Bethlehem, the day was done, and they must tarry for the night. But Bethlehem was thronged with people going to Jerusalem. The inns and homes were filled with guests. And Joseph and his wife could find no place to rest but in a cave where animals were kept and there they slept. At midnight came a cry. A child was born in yonder, cave among the beasts, and lo, the promised son of man was born. And strangers took the little one and wrapped him in the dainty robes that Mary had prepared and laid him in a throne from which the beasts of burden fed. Three persons, clad in snow-white robes, came in and stood before the child and said, All strength, all wisdom, and all love be yours, Emmanuel. Now, on the hills of Bethlehem were many flocks of sheep with shepherds guarding them. The shepherds were devout, were men of prayer, and they were waiting for a strong deliverer to come. And when the child of promise came, a man in snow white robe appeared to them, and they fell back in fear. The man stood forth and said, Fear not. Behold, I bring you joyful news. At midnight in the cave in Bethlehem was born the prophet and the king that you have long been waiting for. And then the shepherds 
all were glad. They found that all the hills were filled with messengers of light, who said, all oh, glory to be God on high, peace, peace on earth, good will to man. And then the shepherds came with haste to Bethlehem and to the cave, that they might see and honor him, whom men had called Emmanuel. Now, when the morning came, a shepherdess, whose home was near, prepared a room for Mary, Joseph, and the child. And here they tarried many days. And Joseph sent a messenger in haste to Zacharias and Elizabeth, who say, the child is born in Bethlehem. And Zacharias and Elizabeth took John and came to Bethlehem with words of cheer. And Mary and Elizabeth recounted all the wondrous things that had transpired. The people joined with them in praising God. According to the custom of the Jews, the child was circumcised. And when they asked, what will you call the child? The mother said, his name is Jesus, as the man of God declared. And now I would like to introduce you, Prophet Nancy, for her sermon about the manger. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's almost here, so I want to wish you another one. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Yes. In the gospel that was just read, I'm going to let you answer it yourselves. Who do you think the three men in white were? The magic. The magic. It's going to be your answer. And who do you think came to the shepherds? Now we know they were flying up in the air. Do you know, we always heard myths about the manger. You know, they said the animals talked on Christmas Eve. Is it true? I don't know. I wasn't there. Form your own answer. No, but I, they actually talked. That's what I heard. True or not, it has to be your decision. A little mystery here. God, give us the eyes to see what you see. The mouth to speak your word, not ours, your word. And the hands to reach out in love. Amen. Mary and Joseph were practicing Essenes. E-S-S-E-N-E. -E. And you know, last evening, the Geographic Channel had the Essenes on was so wonderful. They showed us the river Shalom and, and where they washed and the, all about the Essenes and the caves they found. Now over the cave they built a church. I think it's called Mary Assumption or something to that degree. I'd love to see the Holy Land. Maybe in my dreams. Now, Mary and Joseph, they were always practicing Essenes. The word Essene comes from the Syrian language. Would you believe it or not? At one time they were peaceful. Asaya. Which means physician. And it was translated. I'm trying to get some words here. We, excuse me, we are trying to get some, some meaning of some words. The Greek means therapeutes. Hey, that's pretty familiar. Therapeutes, therapeutes. 
therapy, oh yeah, a lot of words come from that. Having the same meaning. The Essene Brotherhood became a branch of what some of you know about the Great White Brotherhood. And they had two principal centers. Well, I hope you saw this in Egypt because it was on the banks of Moerius. I don't know if I'm saying that right. My Egyptian isn't so good. <laughs> and Palestine at Ed Gedi. Mm -hmm. Near the Dead Sea. We were discussing the Dead Sea this morning. Because again, the archaeologists have found what they feel is parts of Noah's boat, or ship, I should say ship. And you know, that's in the Black Sea. And the man went down and what do they call those things they go down? It looks like a submarine where they can go all the way down. Yes. And he saw, he saw remnants of wood, too. Wood that didn't decay. He's going to try to prove his theory of someday Noah's Ark. Now, there were many Essenes at the gates of the Holy Land. They were at the gates because the people did not have any place to go when they were sick. But they went to the Essenes, the Therapeutes, which breaks down to some more words that we know here today. And they had a special gate. It was called the Essene Gate. And they worked in caves. We heard that word this morning. Helping mothers in labor. And they were known as, this, this, this is really great, hospitalators. Hey, that's a familiar word. Which comes to other words. Hospice which we know about, taking care of the people who are ready to pass on. And hospitals, how about that? Now the animals, they were usually kept in a special place because, you know, let's face it, they didn't have buses. They didn't have trains. No, no, they had to use their own two feet or a horse or a camel. They had to take care of those animals so they were protected from the winds and from the rain. The Essenes record, and they found this. Remember we heard about they found the Lost Scrolls, a curium, mm -hmm. well preserved in goat skin scrolls. And the Essenes recorded that Jesus was born in an Essene grotto. Now, grotto is a pretty familiar word to us, right? We know about grottos. We've heard them. And the Essenes had rescue houses there and hospices in a part of Palestine. Three of these were grottos. A Christ child had to have help getting into the world. A 15-year-old girl by herself, she had to have help. Many tourists are surprised when they go to the Holy Land and they see a large room sometimes 10 to 20 rooms that are free from moisture, from dampness, heat, and cold. We're getting to the manger shortly. And some grottos were located 60 feet down. 
in the earth. And the rooms were hewn out of solid rock and limestone. It must have been beautiful. And the surface of the rock walls were beautiful and iridescent as the oil lamps, which was olive oil, burned in the lamps. I'm trying to visualize the flickering lights, the shadows, Mary and Joseph, and Jesus. It must have been mystical. Sometimes we were taught, you know, they, but they didn't say anything about Mary having help. Well, a 15-year-old girl needs help, as we said before. And these hung from the, the lamps, hung from the ceiling, or from the walls. And Bethlehem's caves, it says in the Aquarian Gospel, he was born in a cave. And today, the caves are still there. They showed them on television last night. And the degrees in the, in the caves, I guess as far down you went, it got colder. And the archaeologist, not making this up, archaeologist, oh, I wished I could have been one of those, <laughs> found human and animal remains, dating back to the Stone Age. Hmm? These teachings were taught to us, Reverend Isabel, Pastor Mall, and myself, by the late Robert Shazan, our mentor. And we are the only church and teaching institution that has his teachings. We should be very proud. He was a wonderful teacher, a wonderful spiritual trans translator, and also a spiritual medium. And he taught us many things. And he made, he made it come alive to us. We would like to share at this time a little bit about angels. As, as a child, did you, when they told you about the guardian angel, did you think sometimes that guardian angel was right aside of you? Mm -hmm. I think every child does, and every adult does too. We don't have to know the names. Names are not important. But it's their job to be the humble servants of God, ready to give without recognition, amen, or without reward, amen. Their message was so simple at the time of Jesus' birth. We still didn't get it over 2,000 years ago. Peace on earth, good will to all mankind. We still didn't, I don't believe we got it yet. But that's only my opinion. Because if you have peace here, you have a, you have a million dollars. Actually, a million dollars. So we don't have to worry about our treasures, huh? No, we don't, but we got to concern ourselves about the gold and the silver of the word of God. And let us pray at night time or any time for our president. He's got a hard job, whether you like him or not. He's got a hard job to do. Since we have communion today, we're going to have a healing meditation. Even the children know how, because they, they were taught how to. Mm -hmm. So let's do our breaths first. Take a deep breath in. 
blow it out through your mouth. Take a deep breath, cleansing breath. I'm trying. Let's try to get the, the ray of Mary, iridescent blue. Let us prepare. We are in a manger room, dimly lit, with the flickering oil lamps. Smell the hay. See Mary and Jesus and Joseph, the kneeling shepherds around the manger, with the animals in reverence. The cave is filled with the holy, holy light. Of the Nova Star. The flickering oil lamps give out a mysterious glow and a beautiful glow. Bringing these lights down to your head chakra. And then down to your heart chakra. Your heart is shaped like a cave, not like the Valentine heart. To the baby Jesus lying within your heart. We sing the Christmas carol to be born in us today. This is what it means. Feel Jesus' love penetrating from the cradle in your heart to all parts of your bodies. Bring the Christ light up again to your heart chakra. Cradling the baby Jesus. Feel his love and his eyes penetrating yours. What beautiful eyes penetrating ours. His hands reaching out to you. The holy light filling you. From your heart, send this holy light and this trinity to all mankind. As we freely give, we freely receive and send the light in your heart with healing and with love and blessing to the world. Amen. In the Christ consciousness. Amen. Bring the Christ light to you, to your head. See, see it coming out. We didn't just the pineal gland from the top of your head. And see the astral colors cascading down over you. 
as a fountain. From your chakra as it cascades down your, all of your bodies. And at this point, another reason for Christmas is forgiveness of yourself and of others with the healing, peace, and joy. It's so beautiful, those astral colors coming down from the top of your head in that beautiful, beautiful fountain. And we can see the Christ lying in that manger in our hearts for the kingdom of God is within us. Come back slowly, feeling refreshed and vibrant in the Christ light and consciousness. Tomorrow night, Reverend Jack will be doing, and Isab Reverend Isabel and Pastor Ma will be doing the service. And remember something, the Christ light is closest to the earth plane at that time. There have been many miracles and healings and transformations of life. We want to share one more thing. We don't, well, there's a man called Simeon that said they went to get the child circumcised. Simeon waited. He was in the temple, an old, old man, waiting, waiting for the Messiah. He never gave up hope. He never said, it's not going to happen. He never said, I don't know about this. Is it happening? But he kept the faith. He was close to 100 years old. And he, he said, 